Richmond's downtown district is thriving as the dynamic capital of Virginia. But elsewhere, in neighborhoods across this city, a long history of discriminatory policies has created deep and enduring challenges. Now in these vibrant communities, leaders and residents are coming together to create innovative pathways out of poverty, to invest in the future by supporting children and families, and to build lasting partnerships for progress. Still, Richmonders know they can only change the future and improve health for all if they understand the past. Richmond has a really challenging history. It was the capital of the Confederacy, and for hundreds of years, policies and practices have continued to marginalize minority populations, in particular African Americans. The way that I see the connection between Richmond's history and community health is you can't disconnect the historical disparities from what's happening in 2017. And that has huge impacts on health outcomes. When we look at neighborhoods across the city, we just see stark differences in things like life expectancy. The trauma of the past lives in Richmond today. It lives in our hearts and our stories. If we're going to resolve the issues that we're struggling with, it starts with an understanding of what led us to this point. One of the things that gives me hope is there are folks that are more willing to have hard conversations around race and class in the city. Once that honest conversation can happen, uh, that does lead to healing and reconciliation. That is the basis for so much of the energy and momentum that is building here. The Office of Community Wealth Building is the only municipal office of its kind in the nation. Our task is to lead the comprehensive community-wide effort to move thousands of Richmonders out of poverty. We have an aspirational goal to reduce the poverty rate by 40% by 2030 for adults and then 50% for children by 2030. We want to create the capacity to raise people out of poverty. We're going to, have to ensure that those uh, who may live in some of our neighborhoods who, who may not have had that opportunity in the past get that opportunity. The Center for Workforce Innovation is our more holistic approach to getting people employed. We're going to actually pull up the job description from a company that you select and then we're going to apply for it. We have at least 300 people a week who walk in our office and these are folks who maybe have given up on looking for a job or face some of those barriers that have prevented them from finding a job that works for them. So type that up here. We hope that with each passing day as they go through training or interact with their case managers there, people see more hopeful possibilities for what they can accomplish as a citizen in Richmond. There are 12,000 people living in public housing, and more than just that many people living in public housing, they're living in densely concentrated areas of poverty. It would be like a copay. With heads that they won't be. Community health workers are residents who know firsthand the challenges of life in public housing. One of those community health workers is an amazing woman named Stephanie Carrington. How many hours do you work? I work four a week. She was a resident of Creighton Court for many, many years, and she immediately was a huge asset to the work that we were trying to do. We're helping people navigate the wealth of resources here in Richmond. A community health worker would try to help you tear down the barriers to health. That is ultimately my general mission, to make self-sufficient and healthy and thriving. We've been working on how do we move from what we have now to something that looks more equitable whether it's mixed income housing or vouchers or ways for people to have neighborhoods that are more nourishing and healthy for them. We said for every unit of public housing that we're going to remove, we're going to ensure that there's a new unit that that family can move to. Everyone needs to talk about community wealth building because when we get this right, your neighbor could be someone that used to live in public housing. The transportation has long been a struggle in our region. Often the jobs are out of reach because of distance and there's no public transit to get people from the neighborhoods 
where they live, to the jobs that are beyond the bus line. Bus rapid transit will create connectivity between communities where people have suffered from unemployment to areas where jobs are available. And just that simple connection will help people make those initial steps out of poverty to self-sufficiency. Richmond has a 44% child poverty rate, and so it's been really important to think about how we're engaging both youth and their families in a different way. Our mission is very simple. It's to help children and families reach their fullest potential and become productive citizens. We have licensed social workers on staff. It's time to say good morning. To help make sure that our families are integrated into the social service system, into the economic development of our communities. If we don't establish those good fundamentals in the first five or six years of their lives, it's an uphill battle for the rest of their lives, and, and we all pay for that. If you have to get, you know, say goodbye. Six Pick was a rehab of a site at a very vibrant corner in the North Side neighborhood called Six Points. Uh, and there were three groups that came together bringing this conversation around how can we use landscaping as art and public beautification. It's also just been a great opportunity for kids who may not have had the opportunity to work and to learn some of those skills that will translate to employment down the road. The Peter Paul Development Center focuses on after-school engagement of youth, but really pulls families into that process. We have access to over 300 children and families in the community. We're making the connections between the families and an array of resources in the community. Everything from housing resources to health and wellness, of course, educational initiatives. The Junior Iron Chef RVA program and competition is a program that engages the child first. You know, we teach the kids culinary skills and nutrition education, and they take that information knowledge back to their families. I like to take the skills that I learned from Junior Aisha home to show my family. Even though I'm young, it's important because when I grow up and I have younger children around me, I can tell them how important it is to eat healthy. True, authentic community development comes from within, and so it's really about building the assets that are already here in this neighborhood. If we really want to change these enormous disparities, if we really want to work together to unravel the impact of that, we have to find alignment between the government sector, the nonprofit sector, the corporate sector, and, and the philanthropic sector. I think that these uh, partnerships and collaborations are actually accelerating the, the rate in which we're dealing with some of these issues and, and making for a better community. The Sarah Garland Jones Center is a great example of an anchor institution making a huge investment in a community. It's a hub for all kinds of activities in the East End. There's a commercial kitchen that serves as a commissary for a couple different food vendors. There's great meeting space for community meetings. Bon Secours is making major investments in the equity of our community. We are looking at affordable housing. We are looking at education and job readiness. It's been really encouraging to see anchor institutions in our community see themselves as more than just funders of initiatives. It's important for VCU to be involved with other anchor institutions because of the resources that we can bring. When you bring community residents to the table who are living every day with the issues that we're studying, you have a whole different perspective. This is not about numbers. This is about people's lives and how we can make a difference. Historically, there haven't been community members at the table. It's been a top-down conversation. I think that if we really want sustainable change to happen in communities, then the solutions to community problems have to come from the community itself. What's next for Richmond is a place where no matter where you live, no matter what your financial background, that you can live a healthy lifestyle. That means uh, the ability to bike and walk in a safe manner and have access to all that Richmond has to offer. And that, to me, is a culture of health. That is the future of Richmond.
This is our ninth year doing the Anthem Moonlight Ride. This event is really about giving people a taste of what it's like to ride in a protected environment. We know that if you build the infrastructure that people need to feel safe and comfortable biking and walking, they're gonna do it more. In 2015, Richmond finished our first citywide plan that details where bike lanes, bike boulevards, paved trails are gonna go throughout the city. And we're really able to track rates of people biking and we've really seen trends go up where the infrastructure is built. So the theory is being proven right. I'm incredibly optimistic about what's happening in this city. I'm optimistic because our willingness to confront our past has led to a healing that we have to go through. It's an affirmation of a new way of thinking of different sectors working together, but at the end, keeping the community that we're serving at the center. And it's an affirmation of a new day in the city.